All right, let's talk about another crystalline imperfection, and that is the uh, interface or two-dimensional imperfections. So, uh, what would this be? Well, the, uh, an imperfection is a disruption in the regular repeating arrangement of atoms, and uh, so there could be there's a few different types of interfaces that we could look at. Let's look at the first one, and that's a free surface. <clears throat> so here, what I've done is I've drawn um, just a simple cubic lattice uh, in well, square lattice, I guess, in two dimensions of little atoms, okay? Now, what if we said, uh, you know, somewhere they hit a surface, the, 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 the edge of the material, like the, uh, you know, the edge of this uh, chrome finish on this little clip here, for example. Well, then all of a sudden, there's an interface between the material and air. You know, that's a disruption. There's an atom here, 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 and so on in a regular repeating arrangement and all of a sudden there's nothing. And the atoms at the surface actually have fewer nearest neighbor atoms. Um, they have, uh, another way of saying that is they have unsatisfied bonds. Doesn't that sound terrible? Unsatisfied uh, bonds. And so there's a is an higher elevate uh, an elevated energy associated with that elevated energy. In fact, we have a name for that, and that energy at this free surface is you guessed it the surface energy. Surface energy. Okay. In the case of water, you might call it the surface tension. In fact. Uh, I thought I'd try to do a little demo here. So here's a piece of glass, and you've probably seen um, this before. If you uh, have ever seen some, you know, water coming down, as I'm sure you have, the window of a glass uh, enclosure on a, um, a, a shower, or glass, a rain coming down a window at a house, and mm, coffee. So why am I doing that? Well, I thought that would be kind of funny to put some coffee on here. I was hoping that the brown of the coffee would show up. I don't know how well it actually does. But what I'm trying to illustrate is what happens when two drops of, and thankfully it's not too hot, um, <laughs> my coffee come together. Now, I don't know if you saw it there. Mm, delicious. Uh, the two smaller drops came together and formed one larger drop. Okay, I think you know that to be the case. Why is that? Well, because two smaller drops, it's a drop, uh, and here's another drop, perhaps a larger one. I'm trying to give it some, some, some shape there. Okay, you know, this one comes down, and what happens is you end up with one larger drop. Looks like this. Okay, larger drop. So initially we had actually two drops, didn't we? And then when they contacted each other, we had a larger drop. Why is that? Well, the reason for that is there's lower energy in this system. Specifically, there's for one large drop, there's a lower surface area to volume ratio. For the same volume of material, there's less surface area, there's less surface energy, and, and that's a result that you've probably seen um, several times before. So another thing I want to look at is, well, what if this interface here was not a, a, a free surface, as this one is? I'll, I'll label that, so we've got that. That's a free surface, but an internal surface, okay? An internal surface. Let me give myself a bit of room here. Okay, what about an internal surface? And what I'll do is I'm going to add, <clears throat> I'm going to discuss um, the formation of a crystal. So here is a little lattice. I just wanted to demonstrate the, this concept here. Um, you know, and we got some atoms moving around in the um, in the liquid state moving really quickly. And eventually, what happens is a few of them slow down, and uh, you know they start to cluster together. And you get enough of them together, it forms a critical size, and, and they start to grow. And you know this this crystal will kind of grow. It's a bit of a simplified look, but it'll get bigger. More and more atoms in the melt will slow down and deposit on the surface. Right, they'll form metallic bonds. They'll achieve a decrease in energy by doing so, and so on. But the other thing that will happen is, um, elsewhere, that exact same process will occur. Let's just put this crystal over here somewhere, perhaps. And, you know, that 
crystal or grain will be oriented uh, at uh, some different orientation. Okay, it's a different orientation, it's just random um, the orientation that it might have, and you know, put it together. And well, so what happens when they come together? They hit each other, and the atoms don't line up properly. They don't line up exactly, and so <clears throat> right in here we have uh, a boundary. It's a two-dimensional boundary, and it's a boundary between what? It's a boundary between um, two grains. Okay, or the con the the technical term is grain, but it's actually synonymous with crystal. Okay, but we're going to use the term grain as that's what's commonly used in this context. So, what do we have at that interface? Well, just like we saw uh, previously, we have an elevated energy. We've got unsatisfied bonds. Um, we've got um, a little bit of mismatch here between the atoms. They might be a little closer than they should be, a little further apart. Um, and so one example I want to take a quick look at is well, what would happen then if I had a dislocation moving through the lattice. So there's my little symbol for a dislocation. I'm not going to draw the actual dislocation in, but that would move, it would proceed through this crystal. And then when it hits this crystal, it has to change direction. Okay, it has to change direction. And so that change in direction, if we just want to think about mechanical properties, a dislocation that encounters the um, grain boundary must change direction. Okay, what does it have to do? It has to change direction. That takes some, uh, some energy. Uh, direction. Okay, change direction. Give myself a little bit more space here. That up. It's going to change direction. It's going to have to navigate uh, a planar mismatch. That is that this, um, you know, this particular plane that the atoms are sliding on might not match up exactly with with this one. Um, so they'll make a little little step like this. One's coming here like this. And then it doesn't quite match up here. It's got to make a little step. So the, that takes a bit of uh, additional energy. Um, and there might also be some, some, some lattice strain that it has to navigate across. That is, the atoms are not at the regular repeating interatomic spacing. They're maybe a little bit closer together or a little bit further apart. And it has to navigate all of those. And for those reasons, we can make this statement, the grain boundary inhibits dislocation movement. Okay? Dislocation movement. And why is that important? Well, that's important because all we need to do then to strengthen uh, a metal is decrease the size of the grains. Decrease metal, a uh, strengthen metal by decreasing grain size. And there's various ways to do that. But all else being equal, you know, two samples, one with fairly large grains and another with kind of smaller grains like this. And I'll spare you the agony of seeing me draw all these little grains in. Okay, but small grains like this, that dislocation would have to navigate, say in this case maybe Three, dis uh, three grain boundaries. In this case, it's going to navigate all these different grain boundaries. There's more grain boundaries, more grain boundaries. So what do we see? Increase in strength. All right, fantastic. That's a two-dimensional imperfection. Thanks a lot.